Good idea. <laughs> uh, uh, there you go. All right. So let everybody get a chance to get settled down a little bit as we get ready to get started here. And so glad to see everybody back tonight, and glad I didn't run everybody off last night. <laughs> um, so again, we are still looking at our study on how to reach Jehovah's Witnesses. Just a little bit of a recap from last night. So we did a little bit of an introduction and again looked at false religions and cults and tried to understand it a little bit more about where those things came from. Of course, false religions and stuff usually come from the devil because the devil is trying to gain all that worship from the Lord. And then you also have the cults. And again, the cults are really, again, kind of the main thing we're looking at because of the Jehovah's Witnesses. But... Again, the cult is basically, again, an organization that ends up having some type of deceptive, undue influence that has very, very incorrect doctrine and is trying to manipulate people, giving them a false sense of salvation and, again, trying to dominate their life. It is very difficult to get out of these things. And, again, I was talking to a few people before we got started, and they're like, I, I just don't understand how they can you know, do think all these things or go along with all this and everything. And again, it's one of those things we got to remember that a lot of times these cults, again, they're usually attacking people who have any type of vulnerabilities. They have a lot of traumas and this and that, a lot of insecurities. And so they come in with that, you know, love and companionship and compassion and whatnot and at first. And then they're able to again manipulate people through that process so the Jehovah's Witnesses again we looked at the history of them as well and saw again how they are founded but again it is important to remember that they do not believe they started with Russell all right they do not believe Charles Taze Russell actually founded the Jehovah's Witnesses they believe that their version of what they think is true is stems all the way back to the very beginning of creation that it really is coming from Jehovah God and that we're wrong but they are right and so they don't see the beginning in the 1800s they see it you know way back at the very beginning of creation as being their thoughts being correct and that leads us into pretty much tonight as we're going to be looking at the beliefs of the Jehovah's Witnesses. This is going to be a two-parter, so we'll have the first lesson. We'll be doing, dealing with some of it. Then after the break, we'll pick up again and look at some of the other beliefs and stuff that they have as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first things we're going to kind of look at is, again, just kind of giving you a general idea about what some of the basic tenets of Jehovah's Witnesses are. So again, you can know what they believe and kind of know where they're coming from and know what they use. All right. So first thing we need to look at, now you're working a while ago. All right, Miss Button Pusher. There we go. Yep. As it was working fine before we started. I don't get it. So the first thing we're going to look at is some of their holy books. So some of the holy books that the Jehovah's Witnesses have. And of course, we can't start any of this without their version of the Bible. So again, the new, or so the new World Translation of the Bible is the book that they claim that they use the most. Um, that is their translation of the Bible. It was, again, claimed to have been written by five Greek scholars within the Jehovah's Witnesses organization. So, and again, it actually was, again, as we learned last night under uh, Nor, that he ended up being the one who commissioned this. The Joe's Witness Bible, again, the New World Translation, he got a couple of copies up here if anybody wants to flip through them and whatnot. The green book and the black book up here on the little table by Pastor Sean and everything. There's a lot of very bad doctrines in there because they're trying to basically conform God's word into their teachings. Before they used the New World Translation, they were using the King James Bible. But again, they ended up again bringing out their own uh, biblical text so that, again, they could justify a lot of things that they have. 
Now, the New World Translation is primarily based on Westcott and Hort's 1881 Greek text. And Westcott and Hort were not very good Christians. In fact, a lot of people would say they weren't Christians at all. Well, not considering that uh, Westcott actually dealt with necromancy. Um, both of it, neither one of them believed in some of the key basic doctrines of the scriptures. And they ended up using a lot of manuscripts that are not actually the main line of manuscripts. So you have the Texas Receptus, which is about 97, 98% of all the manuscripts you have out there. And then you have like the other 2 or 3%, and that's what Westcott and Horse, Hort ended up using. And that 2 or 3% disagrees with what the majority. You have all this over here, it's all the same. Then you have this little bit over here that's different, and this little bit of different doesn't even agree with themselves. And that's what they ended up using for this translation of the Bible. So, yeah, it's not very good, you know, basis or not a really good foundation there. Again, the New World Translation has a lot of errors in it and, again, tries to conform, again, the Bible to Jehovah's Witness doctrines. They claim the Bible is their own sole source of doctrine and beliefs. So they claim that everything that they believe comes from the Bible. But the crazy thing is, is that's not true. They believe it to be true. But that is not necessarily the case. So let's look at the, this quote that we have here from uh, the Watchtower Society. It says, The worldwide Christian society of people who actively bear witness regarding Jehovah God and his purposes affecting mankind, they base their beliefs solely on the Bible. And this comes from a book called Reasoning from the Scriptures, and I actually have a copy of it over here by Pastor Sean as well. Nope, it's right here. He has another one. Yep, so Reasoning from the Scriptures, I have a copy of that right there. And so, again, even through there, they are saying, what, that the Bible is their only basis for their beliefs. But they go further in their Watchtower magazine and state that it is not obvious, or sorry, is it not obvious, why this book of books should be mankind's primary textbook for study? Christians, above all, are keenly concerned about investigating this book that is authored by the one who, to whom God's Son said, your word is truth. That comes out of their Watchtower magazine. So again, they're making this claim, again, that they are following the Bible. And that is one of the big keys that we need to actually understand, that they are claiming they're following God's word. And that's going to be one of the downfalls of how we are going to be able to witness to them and help them out a little bit. So the next quote comes from another book called Let God Be True. It was written by Russell, I believe says, to let God be found true means to let God have the say as to what is the truth that sets men free. It means to accept his word, the Bible, as the truth. Hence, in this book, our appeal is to the Bible for the truth. Our obligation is to back up what is said herein by quotations from the Bible for proof of truthfulness and reliability. So far, a lot of the things that we've looked at, right, sounds pretty good, right? Yes, base everything on the Bible, base you know, what we believe on God's word, hold that up to, as our authority. But again, unfortunately, that's not what the Jehovah's Witnesses really do. Again, they make these claims, but it's not actually how they believe. So another set of books that they end up using, which they actually use more than they do the Bible, are the Watchtower and Awake magazines. So Watchtower and Awake magazines... These are two different publications. They are periodicals that come out every so often for the Jehovah's Witnesses. And they use these as their primary, uh, uh, or primary basis for their beliefs and their doctrines. So all the members within the Jehovah's Witnesses are encouraged to read these publications. They are to subscribe and get them and make sure that they read them thoroughly. They are, to, they are actually encouraged to read these magazines instead of reading the Bible. Jehovah's Witnesses are not encouraged to read their Bible, not even their own translation of the Bible. They are to read the Watchtower, primarily, and the Awake magazine, secondarily. 
because that's going to tell you what the Bible says. You don't read the Bible for yourself. You listen to me, and I'll tell you what the Bible says. Yeah, if any of y'all have been like me, I grew up with a preacher that says, uh, whatever I say, you better have your Bible open and looking it up, making sure I'm right. If I'm wrong, you better let me know and whatnot. And I just I have the same faith. Don't take my word for anything. Look up the Bible yourself. Look up Scripture yourself. And, you know, you make that determination as well that what is said is true. Don't trust anybody with what they say about God's word. Not even Pastor Sean. <laughs> so, again, they state... So the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Watchtower organization itself, actually tells their members that if they read the Bible, it will do nothing but confuse you. The Bible will do nothing but confuse you, and the organization will interpret the Scripture and teach the people that what is correct doctrine. So if you try to read God's Word by yourself, then you're going to just get all kinds of confused. You're not going to know what's, which way is left or right, and... You need us to interpret this for you so you can understand it and everything. And see, there's a trick. They're claiming everything's on the Bible, but yet really it's through their publications. It's through their interpretations. It's through what their leaders are telling them to believe. And that's what they are going with. So again, the Jehovah's Witness members are thinking they're getting Bible but they're really getting man's opinion. And those are two completely different things. So we need to make sure we watch out for that as well. Another book that they, oh sorry, just real quick also. So the Watchtower, I know it's up here. Yeah, the Watchtower ends up usually producing about 24.4 million copies a year worldwide. And the Awake magazine produces over 31.4 million copies a year worldwide. There's a lot of heresy floating around out there just from this one group. And there are many other groups out there besides Jehovah's Witnesses. But this is just one group. What are we doing to spread the actual truth? Now, they're willing to go this far to, spell, uh, to spread falsehoods. What are we doing to actually spread the real truth, God's truth? So the next book that they end up having, again, uh, sitting over here, is Reasoning from the Scriptures. So Reasoning from the Scriptures is the next one. And it is a topical book that is used by the Jehovah's Witnesses to counter literally dozens of objections and or questions. So it's a book that they are told to read, study, and know. So when they go out door to door and everything, they will have a defense for anybody who has any questions or objections to their beliefs. And they'll be able to go through and say, nope, this is why this is. This is the reason why this is right and that's wrong, et cetera, et cetera. So they have literally several, several, several different things in there, including questions dealing with theology, politics, holidays, reincarnation, evolution. And I even have a creation evolution book from the Jehovah's Witnesses sitting over there as well. <laughs> And I promise you, I didn't pay top dollar for any of it, all right? Got, I got it at thrift stores and Goodwills and yard sales, all right? And I'm not going to spend good money on any of these things. But, but I get them because it helps to have a better understanding of things. And that way you can see what, these, what people actually believe about stuff. And again, because it get to their level on things as well. So any issue that a householder may bring up in objecting to religion or even the Watchtower Society itself can be found through that book, Reasoning from the Scriptures. So they end up using that book, again, as basically their guide of how they're going to defend themselves from anybody that objects to them. So the next couple of books that they end up using, you have Knowledge That Leads to Everlasting Life and What Does the Bible Really Teach? Well, if you want to know the latter one, just pick it up and, you know, read it. That would help out a little bit. So both of these are doctrinal books. They're used to teach potential converts. They'll take these two books with them as they go through. They also have the Watchtower magazine with them usually. So they usually like carrying around a lot of their publications. And nowadays they'll just give them to you for free. Back in Russell's time, he made you pay for them. 
But now they'll just sit there and give it to you for free because if they can convert you, then, hey, you're going to subscribe and pay for it anyway and whatnot, so let's just give them free samples. And people are more likely to accept and take free samples. Oh, it's free. All right, yeah. So, again, so that ends up you know, being used that way. But they use these two books right here, again, trying to teach and show their potential converts what they are professing to be truth. They will challenge the beliefs of the person that they are coming into contact with. And again, they are designed to persuade the individual that the Watchtower Society is truly God's organization. So they are there to try to convince the person that they're witnessing to that what they're telling them is the truth, that Watchtower Society is God's organization, it is God's church, it is God's chosen place and people. And that is, so it's really there to kind of overwhelm the person into thinking, oh, well, this has to be right. Because you can have a whole bunch of truth, but if you just get a little bit of falsehood, then you can have some problems. So anybody want to know how much poison is in rat poison? Anybody ever look at the packaging and see how much of it is actually poison? Yeah, about 1%, maybe even less than that. All the rest of it is harmless. But what? If you eat it, you're done. So, again, that's about the way with deception and lies, right? You just have, even if there's just a little bit of problem, it can have disastrous consequences. So that's why we got to make sure we have 100% truth of things. So... Also, within the holy books, pretty much we've listed these as, you know, some of the primary ones they use. But really, any writings published by their various leaders are all considered to be sacred scriptures, pretty much, that they cling on to and they read and stuff. And again, they read all these things instead of the Bible. They're not actually reading God's word. Not even their corrupt version. They are just reading these publications. So here's a quote from one of these publications. So if the six volumes of scripture studies are practically the Bible, topically arranged with Bible proof texts given, or proof text given, we might, or sorry, we might not improperly name the volumes the Bible in an arranged form. That is to say, they are not mere comments on the Bible, but they are, pra are practically the Bible itself. Furthermore, not only do we find that people cannot see the divine plan in studying the Bible by itself, but we see also that if anyone lays the scripture studies aside, even after he has used them, after he has become familiar with them, after he has read them for ten years, if he then lays them aside and ignores them and goes to the Bible alone, though he has understood his Bible for ten years, our experience shows that within two years, he goes into darkness. On the other hand, if he had merely read the scripture studies with their references and had not read a page of the Bible as such, he would be in the light at the end of two years because he would have the light of the scriptures. That comes from, again, the Watchtower magazine. That was written by Charles Russell himself. So basically, you follow what the books say, the scripture studies say. They, that's another, um, again, volume series that Russell put out. You stick with that, you leave the Bible alone. Because you want to stay in the light, you read what I tell you. But if you set that aside and you start reading the Bible yourself, you're going to start going through the darkness. And you're going to you know, end up in hell, or I don't believe in hell. But, <laughs> but you're going to end up not being saved. And you're not going to enter into paradise and stuff. And so, but here's the crazy thing. If you set all that crap aside and you actually start reading the Bible, you're not actually moving away into darkness, but you're actually moving into God's light. You actually are moving into God's light. But they are trying to scare everybody into staying away from God's word and, again, staying with their own stuff. And it's pretty crazy, you know, again, that comes straight from their own stuff. Again, that was in 1910 when that was written. So in 1982, the book, You Can Live Forever in Paradise on Earth, 
became the primary book used in conducting Bible studies. That was in, uh, so that comes from the Watchtower in 1997. So again, so much for the Bible being their base text, right? Primary book was, you can live forever in paradise on earth. I'd rather have my mansion in heaven. I don't know about y'all. So, in the some 20 years that Let God Be True was our primary study book. So again, a watchtower in 1982 stated that there's another book called Let God Be True, and that was their primary book of study as well for about a 20-year period. So again, but they use the Bible. The Bible is the number one thing. Everything, they, they rely on the Bible for all things. Anybody see a little bit of a contradiction with all this? Yeah, it's pretty easy to see from the outside in. But when you're told over and over again that, well, we're basing it on the Bible, we're going to help you interpret because you can't handle it, then, you know, after a while you start believing that. And it's very difficult to break out of that as well. So now we looked at some of their holy books and such. Let's go to their holy sites. So some of the places that they deem as holy places, which they really don't have any what you would consider like technically holy sites like you know temples or places and whatnot. But the places that we're going to be looking at are basically kind of their headquarters because the Jehovah's Witnesses are mostly just like a giant business, right? We talked about last night, like a giant corporation and business. So the first place is Brooklyn, New York where they end up having the headquarters of the Watchtower Society. So again, Brooklyn, New York, it's still there as the headquarters. Again, the governing body is based out of here. So they have various men who supervise the work of the organization. That's what the governing body is. Again, about three to five people, depending on what they're wanting to do. And they'll sit there and basically direct the entire organization of Jehovah's Witnesses and basically determine what they're going to put out, what kind of information they're going to put out, what, again, what the focus is going to be on, and if they're going to change anything, because they've been known to do that a time or two. But again, they provide theological and administrative direction on how to conduct business. So again, they got basically got a board of directors over them. The next holy site that they pretty much have is in London, England, and that is the headquarters of the International Bible Students Association. That was founded by Russell before he died. He went to London to set this up to basically oversee all of the Jehovah's Witnesses overseas ministries. So that's what this one ends up doing. It basically spreads all the Jehovah's Witness teachings across the oceans and other continents and stuff. Most people know about the Holocaust, know about the Jews. Y'all realize that Hitler also targeted Jehovah's Witnesses? Because he viewed them as heretics? Which, you know, is wrong, but I'm, saying, I'm not saying, you know, do what Hitler did, but I just think it's interesting because nobody actually knows all the groups that Hitler targeted. He actually targeted a lot of people. Jews, gypsies, Jehovah's Witnesses, Freemasons, again, uh, mentally and physically handicapped people. Again, it was really crazy. But a lot of people are really surprised that the Jehovah's Witnesses made it into that um, cluster of people that were targeted by the Holocaust. So, at any rate, but again, the reason why, because again, they were starting to spread everything, again, spread their message throughout Europe as well. Today, they do have a worldwide presence. They are literally all over the place. And they're actually very uh, prominent down in Latin America. There's a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses in Central South America region. So now, let's look at their holy days. Holy days. But wait a minute. I thought you said last night they didn't have any holidays. They didn't celebrate holidays. Well... <laughs> Well, they do have some days that they consider holier than others and whatnot, and they do actually celebrate one holiday, and that is the Jewish Passover. They celebrate the Jewish Passover, and with that, oh no, they're not celebrating Easter. Uh-uh, no, they're not celebrating Easter. They're celebrating the Jewish Passover. 
And when they do this, they're celebrating, um, doing a memorial service of the Last Supper with Jesus and his uh, disciples. Most, this is probably the most sacred night of the year for the Jehovah's Witnesses, as every kingdom hall will actually be participating in this all at the same time. So they all basically come together and participate in the, uh, the ceremonies and stuff that they do, kind of reenacting the Last Supper that Jesus had right before the crucifixion. So, again, but again, do account that this is not Easter, all right? They are not actually celebrating Easter. They are, it's more similar, again, to the Jewish Passover that they hold. Wasn't well, that about the same time? Yeah, it is, but, you know, the re the Easter today, we're celebrating the resurrection of Christ. But, again, they're looking at things beforehand. So some other holy days they have are their conventions. Everybody knows about the Jehovah's Witness conventions, I'm sure, or hope so, because we actually ended up being uh, in the same town as one one time. We were trying to get a hotel room and whatnot, and the Jehovah's Witnesses basically had all the hotel rooms booked up and whatnot because they had that co a convention there. And so we were trying to get in. And like, well, are, are you a Jehovah's Witness? I'm a witness for Jehovah. I'm not lying. I witness for Jehovah quite a bit, but I'm not. I'm not a JW. I'm not a Watchtower. But if you ask me if I'm a witness for Jehovah, but yes, I am. <laughs> so, do what? Yeah, we got us a little bit of a discount. <laughs> but anywho, but they do hold three conventions a year. The Jehovah's Witnesses have three conventions a year where, and again, they are very big ordeals, fill up entire stadiums and convention centers and such, and have literally thousands and thousands of people at these things and listening to what's going on. Uh, let's see here, where am I at? So there you go. So again, these include Bible talks, they usually, so people talking about the Bible, which you know about how far that goes based off of what we looked at earlier. Uh, interviews between people or whatnot, uh, reenactments of biblical scenes and such, and even costume dramas and stuff as well. It's a really, really big ordeal. What? Yeah, it's a Comic Con <laughs> for for Jesus, or at least that's what they're claiming. So the last big thing to really recognize is the fact that Joe's witnesses do not celebrate anything religious and government holidays and and even birthdays are all seen as pagan therefore they do not actually celebrate any of these things so they don't celebrate anybody's birthday they don't celebrate any religious holidays they don't celebrate any national holidays because they view all these holidays as coming from pagan origins and truth be told, for some of it, they're not entirely wrong because a lot of some of the holidays and stuff we have today do have some things in them that are kind of paganish. You ever wonder why we got Easter bunnies and Easter eggs? <laughs> Fertility. Easter is the festival of Ishtar and whatnot. Those are just fertility symbols that kept the kids busy while the adults were doing other things. <laughs> uh, yeah. That, those were the, all the goths and stuff and everything. But anywho, so moving on <laughs> before I get myself into a hole. <laughs> Mr. Sean, or Pastor Sean won't let me come back. Uh, so let's look at the different factions of the um, Jehovah's Witnesses. I can always say sect very well, but if I try to say it plural, it doesn't sound right. So... I just end up saying uh, factions and such. But there are actually different branches of Jehovah's Witnesses out there. You have the mainstream Watchtower Society, but there are other groups that actually, you know, actually stemmed from them. One of them is the Don Bible Students Association. The Don Bible Students Association it was formed in the 1920s. Today, it has roughly about 9,000 adherents worldwide. So that's roughly about 9,000 people worldwide. Oh, sorry. My notes here are not the same as up there. I changed it. I looked it up and double-checked myself, but I forgot to change it on here. So, yeah, so 75,000 people worldwide today. Uh, source information there was a little bit outdated when I first wrote it down on Word. 
So again, about 75,000 adherents worldwide to the again, what is it, Don Bible Students Association. And they carry out the most extensive outreach ministry of any of the Bible groups outside Jehovah's Witnesses. So you may end up seeing them as well because they go door to door just about as much as the Jehovah's Witnesses do. So they do quite a bit of that door to door as well. The next group that kind of stemmed from them as well are the Layman's Home Missionary Movement. You have the Layman's Home Missionary Movement. And the reason why I'm mentioning these things because these groups, again, they stem from the Jehovah's Witnesses. And if you ever run across any of them, then at least you know that you can use these same witnessing strategies for them as well. So that's the reason why we're kind of looking at these factions here. So this group was founded by Paul S.L. Johnson in 1918. Johnson was actually very angry that Rutherford took over. He didn't like what the changes Rutherford made. So he's like, all right, skedaddle. We're going to leave and do our own thing. We're going to follow Russell's teachings. So they're actually considered the most orthodox group of Russell's uh, teachings. They follow Russell's teachings to the letter and do not actually pardon me, do not actually change anything or add new stuff. They just kind of keep Russell's doctrines. Today, there's about 15,000 members in the group. So again, kind of less likely you'll probably see one of them, but at the same time, you never know, right? We never know. Better be safe than sorry, right? Better be prepared. Be like a Boy Scout. There are actually 10 other factions of this group but we're not going to go through them those are the two biggest ones the other ones are smaller than even these but there are actually 10 other factions of the jehovah's witnesses and most people again most people don't know that i didn't really know that until i started diving in real deep to it you know a few years back <coughs> so now let's look at the watchtower organization itself the Watchtower Organization, which is the, again, the headquarters. It is the main bulk of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Remember, the group is called the Watchtower Tract and Bible Society. That is kind of the official name of the group. So the Watchtower Organization considers itself to be God's theoretic government on earth, or theocratic, there we go, the theocratic government on earth. Only the Watchtower organization has the truth and can explain the truth to others. That is what they claim. They're, they're the only ones that have that truth. They're the only ones that are able to explain that truth to other people. They state that Jehovah created the organization to help spread the Jehovah's Witness teachings since 1879. So the organization was specifically built by Jehovah God and that if you go against the organization guess what you're going against jehovah so you're going against god if you go against the organization so the organization controls all it knows all it is is dominant it's an authoritarian type of or, well i'll say government but again the business pretty much so it is considered to be the prophet of God. It actually considers itself to be God's prophet. So again, it is considered to be God's prophet. So one of the newspapers that did an interview, I think this interview was with Nor. I can't remember exactly. No, it wasn't Nor. It was the guy after him. I can't remember his name right off the top of my head. But he said that they, interpretations of scriptures, are passed to the Holy Spirit passed to the Holy Spirit, who invisibly communicates with Jehovah's Witnesses and the publicity department. That was in 1954. <laughs> so they got a publicity department. They didn't know Jesus needed a publicist. Maybe he would have done better on his ministry if he'd had one, you know. <laughs> well, well, yeah, John the Baptist might, but, you know, until John went crazy and lost his head. Oh, bad joke. <laughs> All right. So the organization also is God's sole channel for truth. The organization, the Jehovah's Witness, the Watchtower organization, it considers itself as God's only channel for the truth. And again, these are ideas and things that the Jehovah's Witnesses believe. 
So they're looking only for that, to that organization because they're the only ones that has the truth because they are the prophet of God. So let's see what they have to say about some of it. So it is God's sole collective channel for the flow of biblical truth to men on earth. So the Watchtower, again, magazine saying that the organization is God's sole collective channel for the flow of biblical truth to men on earth. If you want to know God's truth, you have to go through the Watchtower Society. That is what they are trying to claim. So be it known that no other system of theology even claims or has ever attempted to harmonize in itself every statement of the Bible, yet nothing short of this can we claim. And that comes from the studies in Scripture from Charles Russell. And so, again, he's basically saying that no one else has been able to harmonize Scriptures and put them together quite like we have. We are successful that we know the truth. Um, I, I hate to tell you, but a lot of pastors and preachers try to harmonize a lot of the scriptures and stuff, make sure it, make it actually, you know, fit, you know, make it logically, you know, work. And some are better at it than others. But the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society is the greatest corporation in the world because from time from the time of its organization until now, the Lord has used it as His channel through which to make known the glad tidings. So you get the glad tidings, which, again, ends up being gospel, right? Good news, glad tidings, kind of translate, that's what gospel kind of translates into. So, again, basically they're saying they're the only ones that has the gospel, they're the only ones that has the truth. And, again, it's through this that God has ended up using to bring that forward into the world. Unless we are in touch with this channel of communication that God is using, the Watchtower Society's leadership, we will not progress along the road of life, no matter how much Bible reading we do. So it doesn't matter how much you read the Bible. If you're not listening to the leaders of this organization, then it ain't going to matter. You're not going to make it down the road of life. You're not going to be successful in your ministry or in this life. And when it comes to the end, then you're just going to cease to exist. Because you're not going to make Jehovah happy. With the organization, if you reject the organization, then you end up rejecting God. For the Jehovah's Witness, if they reject the organization, they reject the Watchtower Society, then they are, that's equivalent to them as rejecting Jehovah God. And by the way, I want to say this real quick. I should have probably mentioned it sooner. But um, they do use Jehovah's name, and that is God's name, Jehovah. But just because they're invoking the true name of God doesn't make it right. So just going to throw that out there a little bit. But again, they, so again, to reject the Watchtower Society, to reject God. Theocratic ones, which is referring to the Jehovah's Witnesses, we are We'll, sorry, we'll appreciate the Lord's visible organization and not be so foolish as to pit against Jehovah's channel their own human reasoning and sentiment and personal feelings. Don't think for yourself. Keep all your feelings, keep all your ideas and stuff out of it. You just need to listen to us and don't have any of your own thoughts. You said it, not me. You said it, not me. So, but again, let's say, so avoid independent thinking. And that's actually the head of a section of the magazine here. And avoid independent thinking. How is such independent thinking manifested? A common way is by questioning the counsel that is provided by God's visible organization. Don't ask questions. Just do what we say, follow along, be a good little sheep. And again, we are called the sheep of God, but, right, but we're not being, you know, like I said last night, we're not being led to the slaughter. And we are allowed to think and question and to use logic and reasoning. You know, God's not against us thinking about stuff and using, thing, using rationality and logic. That's why he gave it to us. And it's very logical to follow the Lord and whatnot. And that's why we have these deductive reasoning skills. I just wish more people would use it. <clears throat> like common sense isn't very common. I, I know, right? 
So I have learned to view Jehovah as my father and his organization as my mother. Again, coming from that. So again, this, this is how they hold up the organization. Again, if you reject the organization, you're rejecting God. And again, you're not supposed to listen to anything else other than the organization. So God the Father, Jehovah is your father, but the organization itself should be like your mother. And that should be the way that you treat both of them, and therefore you should obey your parents as unto the Lord, right? <laughs> so the, only the organization can end up interpreting the Bible. The Watchtower Society is the only one allowed to interpret the scriptures. The members of the Jehovah's Witnesses are not allowed to do so. They are not allowed to read the Bible and interpret it themselves. They have to follow along with what the organization says. Again, if they don't do that, then they are committing a sin and, you know, having problems. So let's read some of the stuff they had to say. So God caused the Bible to be written in such a way that one needs to be in touch with his human channel before one can fully and accurately understand it. So basically, if you try to read the Bible by yourself, you're not going to be able to understand it. You need to be open in touch with God's human channel which is the organization is what they're talking about and we will teach you how to understand the scriptures right that's what that's the job of the Holy Spirit and I was going to mention that just now again if you give the Bible to a lost person and tell them just start reading yeah they're going to have a hard time with it and but they can know the Bible in fact I know a lot of atheists that know the Bible better than Christians do but they don't believe it, and they don't understand it because they can't put it together. Why? Because they don't have the Holy Spirit guiding them and illuminating things for them. And that, so they can't see the connections. And I have a whole series on you know, problem texts, basically, you know, where people think that there's contradictions in the Bible. But they're really not contradictions. They're just supposedly contradictory. They actually have to pay very close attention to what is being said. Yeah, but a lot of people just give it like, oh, well, oh, well that's just wrong. That's, that doesn't match. Well, did you actually read what it said? Did you look at the punctuation? Did you look at the tense? There's a lot of different things you got to look at whenever you're reading the scripture to make sure it's, you know, accurately, that it's accurate and you get the right interpretation from it. You mean punctuation marks matter in the Bible? Oh, yeah. Paul sat there and made a fuss over one letter. Whenever in Galatians he talked about that he didn't say unto Abraham that uh, seeds as in plural, but seed singular. So again, Paul made a, a one letter, made an argument about one letter. So we've got to be careful. But again, the Holy Spirit's the one that's supposed to guide us, but yet they're trying to take that role of the Holy Spirit. So thus, the Bible is an organizational book and belongs to the Christian congregation as an organization, not to individuals, regardless of how sincerely they may believe they can interpret the Bible. For this reason, the Bible cannot be properly understood without Jehovah's visible organization in mind. You know, it'd be, God would be very, very cruel if he'd give us a book that we would never be able to understand on our own. And yes, again, as I said, if somebody's lost, they're going to have a little bit of a hard time with it. But if they're truly seeking after the Lord, do you think the Lord might illuminate them just a little bit and open their mind and their heart up to some of it to where they can see the truth? Oh, yeah. Um, again, a lot of people wanted to make God to be a very cruel God. But in fact, he's very loving and he's there for us. But you have to what? Actively and willingly and truthfully seek him. You have to really want to know who he truly is. Not a God that you want for yourself, but who God truly is. And then God will reveal himself to you. So according to the Watchtower Society, the publications con uh, contains God's truth. All their publications have God's truth in them. So he, the Jehovah's Witness, does not advocate or insist on personal opinions or harbor private ideas when it comes to Bible understanding. Rather, he has complete confidence in the truth as it is revealed by Jehovah God through his son, Jesus Christ, and the faithful and discreet slave, which is Watchtower Leadership. 
So again, they have God's truth. God's truth has been revealed to them. And again, they reveal that truth to all their people through the publications and stuff that they end up putting out there bi-monthly, monthly or bi-monthly. I can't remember exactly how often they come out. It might even be quarterly. But I do know some of them end up having about 200 pages in there. They're, they're very thick magazines anymore. So fight against independent thinking. Hey, what, what do you know? There's another one of those. So fight against independent thinking. Such thinking is evidence of pride. So if you think for yourself, you're being prideful. If we get into, so if we get to thinking that we know better than the organization, we should ask ourselves, where did we learn Bible truth in the first place? Would we know the way to the truth had it not been for the guidance from the organization? Really, can we get along without the direction of God's organization? No, we cannot. And the saddest truth is, that's a question that I'm going to have y'all pose to them tomorrow. <laughs> because where are you, what are you actually truth, uh, trusting in? And what would actually hurt you worse if you lost the Bible or if you lost the Watchtower magazine? Yeah. But again, but you're asking the Jehovah's Witness that question. What actually would impact their life more if they didn't have the Bible or if they didn't have the Watchtower magazine? And they'll probably tell you the Watchtower magazine. Why? Because they, they're thoroughly convinced they can't understand the Bible without it. So like a child, we need to associate with those who can talk the pure language of truth to us who can answer our Bible, our Bible questions and show us how to study and find the answers for ourselves. So again, they got to, again, go through the organization. You cannot trust yourself. You got to go through the organization again. They're forcing this reliance upon themselves to keep people ensnared into this cult and trapped in it where they don't see a way out. Oh, I got to stay here because they're the only ones that have the truth. I can't figure this out on my own. Again, this is part of that breaking period we talked about yesterday, right? They try to break you in some shape, form, or fashion, whether it's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And that's what they're doing here. They're constantly breaking down your, yourself, your self-esteem, and who you are as an individual and making it all about the organization itself. It is the organization that matters. You don't matter. Again, another reason why this is considered a cult, although they don't believe it, but it is. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses, because they view the Watchtower Society as God's theocratic kingdom on earth and God's government on earth, they consider all the governments of the earth as satanic. All governments on earth are satanic, and, you know, they're not 100% wrong. You know, Satan is the god of this world. Um, and everything eventually they're all going to bow down to him anyway but again all the governments are satanic according to the Jehovah's witnesses only god's government should be adhered to and followed so they should only ha follow god's government and god's uh leaders so they don't have to listen to the governments of the world according to this belief they don't have to follow anything the governments of the world say Although they do, because if they don't, they'll be arrested and thrown in jail. But that's one of the reasons why, well, again, we'll get that in a second. But all other governments will be destroyed at Armageddon. So once Armageddon in a time happens, again, they believe that all these satanic governments and stuff will all be end up being consumed uh, by the Lord and getting rid of. And then only the Watchtower Society will end up surviving in the end. Which, again, they're not 100% wrong except for the fact the Watchtower Society will not be the one surviving in the end. But the Lord, when he comes to set back up his kingdom, he will be taking out all the world governments and stuff. Well, there's only going to be one at that point, but still. And he's going to set up his own. There ain't going to be no Watchtower Society. So because of adhering to their spiritual government, they refuse to do a lot of the following things. So because they're adhering to this spiritual government, the theocratic government and kingdom of God here on earth through the Watchtower Society. It's, that's the reason why they don't say a Pledge of Allegiance to any, in any country. 
Not just the United States. They don't say it anywhere. They don't salute any country's flag. Yeah, it's not just the United States. It's all over the place. And they also don't serve in the armed forces. They do not serve in the military. They actually get military exemptions because of their faith. So if there was a draft and everything and they got called in, they just have to go, I'm a Joe's witness, I don't believe in that, and they would not have to go and fight. Hey, that might be a good draft dodging tool. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm a witness for Jehovah. <laughs> but, so again, that gives a little bit of a structural idea about some of their beliefs. And again, the key thing for this first part is really the amount of influence the organization itself has on the witnesses. Because the organization itself is, again, basically taking the place of God in their life. And so it controls all, it knows all, it sees all, and without the organization, then you're destined for failure. And you're not going to have salvation, and you're not going to get to enter into the paradise. They're not going to heaven. They, they even think they're not going to heaven. We'll get into that in the next hour. But again, so the organization and their trust in that is a big, big part of their faith and that's one of the key things we need to know is that they really really rely on that organization and so when it comes to witnessing as we we'll talk about tomorrow breaking their trust in that organization is the key that is going to be the key to witnessing effectively to them and I'll show you all how to do that tomorrow but we still got some more beliefs to get through and we're, we're get ready for a wild ride you think that was bad Ooh me so let's go ahead and go to break, and we'll come back roughly 10 minutes or so and continue on.